come on in, pull up a chair, and take a load off, because today I am going to review and page through RuneQuest role-playing in Glorantha from Chaosium Inc. So, does this tome mark the ultimate edition of RuneQuest, or is it simply a rehash of things that have come before? You'll find out after this. Howdy, 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 gang. Yes, I'm Jeff McAleer, back once again as your host here at the Gaming Gang channel. As I mentioned in the open, I'm going to pace through and review RuneQuest role-playing in Glorantha. This is the seventh edition of RuneQuest. In fact, it is the fourth edition to be produced by Chaosium Inc. It's written by Greg Stafford, Jeff Richard, Jason Dural, and Steve Perrin with artwork provided by, and I apologize right up front, because I'm gonna mispronounce a bunch of these names, but artwork is provided by Rick Becker, Bernard Bittler, Simon Bray, William Church, Miguel Coronado, Gene Day, Andre Fetisov, Pierre Foksowitz, Lisa Free, Merle Insignia, Tomas Jedruzic, Kalen Kadiev, Roman Kisyov, Rachel Khan, Jennifer Lang, Rhonda Libby, Michelle Lakami, and Joel. The 445-page hardcover is available from Chaosium for $54.95. The PDF is available at DriveThruRPG for $27.95. So let's swing on over to the other camera, and let's start paging through. I will share my thoughts on RuneQuest role-playing in Glorantha. Here we have RuneQuest role-playing in Glorantha in all its glory. Love the artwork on the front. It, uh, there are actually some of these characters are presented in the book as well. These are actually well-known heroes and gods from the history of RuneQuest and Glorantha. So let's take a look at the back here. I'll share a little bit of the flavor text on the back. It says, Welcome to Glorantha. It is a fantasy world unlike any other, a mythic world of mortals and gods, myths and cults, spirits and elementals, monsters and heroes. Magic permeates all of existence, and the bonds between tribe, clan, and family are as important as are the relationships between the mortals and the gods they worship. Beyond the gods and spirits are the runes that make and define reality. Those who master the runes can shape the world. This is Glorantha, the world of RuneQuest, and the most acclaimed fantasy role-playing game setting of all time. And that is no joke. Glorantha has won numerous awards. Anyone who's been role-playing for a certain amount of time is familiar with RuneQuest, Greg Stafford's work. So that is not a joke. So we do have a splash map here of the Dragon Pass. Very, very cool. Definitely like this. And we've got a cool little bookmark as well. I do want to mention, I already did a very detailed page through of RuneQuest role-playing in Glorantha. So I'm actually going to page through this relatively quickly and just kind of share some of my thoughts about each of the sections here. So we do get into... An introduction talking about what is RuneQuest, what is Glorantha. And of course, the first edition of RuneQuest did appear in 1978. Uh, it was uh, designed by Steve Perrin and Greg Stafford. And I had the second edition of RuneQuest, and that's the one that came in the one inch classic Chaosium box. And I picked that up, I think it was probably about 1980, 81 ish is when I actually got my copy, and I have followed RuneQuest and Glorantha ever since. So we do get a bit of a background about Glorantha, information about the runes, because the runes play a very, very important part in the game system itself. The runes, you can kind of look at the runes as like elemental, like earth and fire, as well as life and death. 
we don't get a ton of information about Glorantha in this book. Just a few pages. Uh, I do want to point out there is some relatively mature artwork as well involved in this. That's why, personally, I think this is a role-playing game that's for a more mature audience. I'm not necessarily saying that you have to be, you know, in your 50s like me, but this probably isn't really a system that's going to have a lot of appeal to younger gamers, you know, early teens, things like that anyway. But uh, I do want to point out that there is a fabulous two-volume guide to Glorantha that is available that uh, I, I believe all in all, I think it's over a thousand pages. It is just a, a work of art. It really is. So we do get into the adventurers, and that is what the player characters are referred to in RuneQuest. Just like uh, Call of Cthulhu, your characters are known as investigators. In RuneQuest, you are adventurers. So we do get a good amount of page count devoted to creating your characters. Now, one thing that really does play a major part in character creation is your heritage and your family, like your grandparents. This is something that you don't normally see in most fantasy role-playing games. And the reason behind that is there is just so much attention given to your family, your tribe, the cult you belong to. And I do want to mention uh, the use of the word cult. Normally these days we think of cults as something really bad. You don't want to belong to a cult. In RuneQuest, it's it's more traditional. It's a more traditional usage of the word cult. So as I was talking about the different runes, each of those runes will have, uh, or more than one rune, will have a god associated with it. Your cult effectively worships those gods or that god, and a lot of what you do actually stems from the cult or god that you worship. I do want to mention that all the players have access to magic. All the players have access to combat. We have the traditional attributes, strength, dexterity, constitution, so on. Hit points. Uh, hit points are not like most of the fantasy role-playing games out there. You are not going to have 50, 60 hit points. RuneQuest is a much more realistic kind of system. It is a Bronze Age era that this takes place in. So combat can be very, very deadly. And like along the lines of some old school Renaissance games, combat should be avoided if possible. This is a D100 system for the most part. RuneQuest was, as far as I understand, the first D100 game. So what that effectively breaks down to is that you have skills and you will have, say for an example, a 40% in, your, in a specific skill. And when you roll your percentile dice, you need to roll that number or less to succeed. So the, going through kind of step-by-step -step of the character creation, there is a hero, Vasana, that kind of uh, takes us through a lot of the book, talking about, for an example here, we, we're talking about the various different attributes and skill categories. So we've got knowledge, agility, manipulation, stealth. Talking about basic skill values. Even though this is a D100 system and we do have skills, there are not hundreds of skills for you to have to worry about. Also, we've got uh, some uh, archetypes here as well. There aren't tons of them, but you can effectively kind of play whatever character you want. Because as I mentioned, everybody has access to magic, and everybody can be a you know, weapons master if they want. So kind of just popping through here a bit. But there is one aspect, we'll get to that, this in just a little bit, that uh, I find very cool, and it is kind of lifted from King Arthur Pendragon, and that, that's the passions. And I will talk about those in just a bit. So here we have some pre-generated adventurers, kind of give you a better idea. 
of the various different character types. Of course, any of the players can feel free to jump on in and swipe one of these players, player characters to, uh, to use for themselves, any of these pre-gens. Love the artwork. There is some fantastic artwork throughout. Even the quality of the, the paper. It has a little bit of a finish. There's a little bit of a sheen. I got to say, and I'll, I'll be the first to admit that I have not seen tons and tons of Chaosium books lately. Of course, I did recently review the quick start for the, or I should say the starter set for Call of Cthulhu, which was fantastic. But it was not a hardcover book. So just really, really nicely done. Uh, I am going to mention this probably a few times, but at the price point for RuneQuest role-playing in Glorantha, this hardcover is a steal. You're looking at over 440 pages, and it comes in at an MSRP of $54.95. So we are going through some of, the, uh, some of the various different homelands, some of the different regions of Glorantha. Uh, much of the focus is on the Dragon Pass area as well. Prax is a very, very famous region for, for those out there who are familiar with RuneQuest. We also get some sample clans as well because it's very important. Your clan will play a very, very major role in your character's adventuring. Another aspect of the game that I find really interesting too is that when your characters go out on adventures, you're really mainly going probably on one adventure a year. So once again, Greg Stafford was really keen on generations or, or a lifetime of adventure and really being able to tell a story that could, could go on for decades. Just take a look at the uh, fantastic campaign he put together for uh, King Arthur Pendragon. It's just fantastic. So there's a bit of that in RuneQuest role-playing in Glorantha as well. So I do want to point out that the game system is a little bit crunchy, probably a bit crunchier uh, for those out there who have been playing, say, a lot of 5th edition Dungeons & Dragons. There is quite a bit more crunch to RuneQuest than you would find in, say, 5th edition or games like Fate, uh, Savage Worlds even. That isn't to say that this is a difficult system to come to grasp with, simply because, keeping in mind, it's D100. So we also have different skills. We get into the explanation of the various skills. If you have any familiarity with, say, Call of Cthulhu, the D100 system is going to be Pretty second nature. Although one thing I do appreciate that they didn't do with RuneQuest was uh, make you like break down your percentile chance based on difficulty. That is one of the things that I was not a huge fan in the latest edition of Call of Cthulhu. I, you know, it wasn't a, like a deal breaker or anything like that because the new edition is actually really, really good. It was just, I, I just wasn't a keen... Uh, I wasn't real keen on having to break down, you know, four different numbers for someone's skill or three different numbers for somebody's skill. I prefer as a game master to just give bonuses or give penalties. So here we get into combat. As I mentioned, combat is very deadly. It is very easy for player characters to be killed with one blow. Of course, it's also pretty easy to dispatch your enemies in a single blow as well. Uh, you also have the, uh, the fact that you can have crippling injuries as well. You may not necessarily be killed outright, but you may have scarring or lose a limb or fingers or an eye or anything like that as well. So going through here, as I mentioned, it is a Bronze Age sort of era. So the technology and the weapons and equipment do reflect that. Paging on through. Armor uh, is utilized as uh, a way to absorb damage. 
as opposed to, say, having an armor class. One of the cool things that I remember right off the bat when I first picked up RuneQuest all those years ago was how you could have various different pieces of armor in various different locations on your body. Now we get into the runes. As I, as I mentioned before, runes are very, very important. That's why this game is called RuneQuest. And they'll say right here, it says, runes are the building blocks of Glorantha. They are the symbols, archetypes, embodiments, and actual matter or energy of the middle world. Runes originated with the very creation of Glorantha. They define the cosmos and everything in it. So this is another aspect of the game that will be very different for those out there who are used to a Pathfinder or a Dungeons and Dragons kind of setting. Now we have passions and reputations. And I had kind of touched on the passions a moment ago. And as I said, it's, it's lifted somewhat from King Arthur Pendragon, where with your passions, you have certain aspects of your character which are very, very important. So, uh, kind of like, you know, family or love. And it's not, the passions aren't necessarily utilized to kind of shoehorn you into role-playing a certain way. It, they're more used along the lines to, to give you a good understanding of the sort of character you have and how you can role play that character. There's never a, a situation where it's like, you can't do what you want to do. You might be conflicted, and uh, it's kind of, uh, you're kind of working against one of your passions, one of the things that are important to you. But I, I actually, I think it was one of the coolest things about King Arthur Pendragon, and I think it's used to, to very good effect in RuneQuest as well. Once again, it, like any role-playing game, if it's something that you don't care for, you can discard it. You can play this game however you want. As I mentioned also, any character has access to magic. You don't have to be a magic user per se to be able to utilize magic. You use magic points, which are uh, based off of your POW, or power attributes as opposed to Vancian magic, where you memorize spells, and then once you use them, you have to re-memorize them. So we start going through the different, different schools of magic, different types of magic. Yes, schools might not necessarily be a good fit. So we've got a lot of different magic in here, too. So don't feel just because this isn't a high fantasy sort of setting that you're not going to have access to a lot of cool spells for your characters. Then we start going into some of the rune cults. And if I remember right, there are quite a few cults in here. And actually, it's also very easy for you to basically create cults as well. So then we get into the rune lords. So we have rune priests as well. Talking about temples. Religion and society played a huge role in much of the uh, background that Greg Stafford created for Glorantha. In fact, if you're not overly familiar with RuneQuest, Glorantha was actually a, a setting that Greg Stafford was working on for novels. Uh, long He was working on Glorantha long before role-playing came to be. We're just kind of flipping through here with the different cults. I think all in all, I think there's like 20 or 21. So we had spirit magic. Now we're going to go into rune magic. And once again, as you can see, we have quite a lot of various different spells. And it's showing, okay, so these are how many magic points you actually will spend in order to cast that spell. We also show the various different runes they're associated with, too. 
One thing that I do find missing in uh, RuneQuest role-playing in Glorantha is uh, a bestiary that has a lot of different creatures and monsters in it. The uh, reason behind that is, of course, Chaosium does have a Glorantha bestiary too. So I would have liked to have seen a little more of that in this core book. But if you look at it as most role-playing games, a lot of times you find the core book is not going to have a whole lot of creatures and monsters in it. You, uh, you have to actually pick up a separate book. So not surprising to see that. But uh, actually, I was going to say, there are some role-playing game systems out there that don't even have a bestiary. Yes, I'm... Looking at you, Lamentations of the Flame Princess. I mean, there are some out there, but they they weren't published with with the core rulebook, and I I believe most of them are actually third party. So just kind of going through sorcery. So as I mentioned, there's all different kinds of magic in RuneQuest, and a lot of the page count devoted to it. And we're getting close to the end here. Equipment and wealth. Uh, most characters, for the most part, are uh, going to be kind of tribal characters. Now, there are some more advanced civilizations in Glorantha. And uh, for the most part, though, you are going to see that most of the player characters will, will come from a, a tribal sort of existence or nomadic existence as well. Then. Remember I was talking about how there's kind of a generational thing going on or it's like the lifetime of your adventurer. This is the section that kind of talks about that between adventures. How do you improve your characters? You don't level up in RuneQuest. You improve on your skills. So you could increase the, uh, the percentile chances for your skills. Also talking about gaining wealth in this as well. Then we get into the character sheets. And as you can see, you're looking at four pages for your character sheet. So we've got a conversion guide, which I thought this was very cool. So effectively, this guide here is to walk you through how to convert any of the editions of RuneQuest to the newest RuneQuest. And right here, there are not that many pages. So things have changed, obviously enough, but summed up pretty easily how to convert older RuneQuest uh, adventures and supplements, because there has been loads and loads of supplemental material over the years for RuneQuest. There you have it. Then we've got the index, and we have another cool map on the spread for the back cover. All right, so now that we've kind of paged through and I've shared some thoughts about RuneQuest role-playing in Glorantha, what are my overall thoughts and my review score? Allow me to sum up my thoughts about RuneQuest role-playing in Glorantha. I have to say, this really is the ultimate edition of RuneQuest. It is a beautiful book. It is very nicely put together. The paper quality is much higher than you see in most role-playing game books. You're looking at over 440 pages of material for $54.95, essentially $55. Take a second to think about some of the other larger role-playing game companies out there. Usually you'll pay $50 for about 260 pages of content. And I am certainly not knocking those other companies because they produce some really great content. But RuneQuest role-playing in Glorantha at that price is pretty much a steal. And if you like the digital edition, it's a fantastic deal for the PDF as well. I do want to mention that this is not going to be a role-playing game for everyone. I certainly do recommend RuneQuest for a more mature gamer, 
I'm not necessarily saying you have to be my age to really get into RuneQuest, but I am saying that this is probably not a system for someone who's just joining the hobby, somebody who's in their, say, early teens, because there's a very realistic feel and thread that runs throughout this entire game system. And that might not be everyone's cup of tea. Keep in mind, this is a Bronze Age era. And the vast majority of your player characters and non-player characters are going to be humanoid or humans. You're not going to see a ton of the monsters that you've come to see as typical tropes in other fantasy role-playing games. That is just not how Glorantha operates. That being said, I like the fact that there's a much more realistic feel to the combat. No matter how experienced your character may be, it is very possible for them to die from a single blow. Once again, very, very realistic. Do have to point out too, the rules can be a bit crunchy. There's a lot to process, and uh, it is not something that you're probably going to just jump right on into. But those are really, and they're not even really negatives, they're just observations that I have. But for those out there who have had an interest in checking out RuneQuest, learning more about Glorantha and Greg Stafford's work, this is a fantastic volume. You really do owe it to yourself to pick this up. Now, if you already have previous editions of RuneQuest, depending on how far back you go, this may not necessarily be a must-have, but I gotta say, the artwork is fantastic. There's a lot of good stuff in here. There's a lot of new stuff, too. It is not just rehashing old mechanics, old systems from previous editions. There's a lot going on in RuneQuest role-playing in Glorantha. I have to say, Greg Stafford did fantastic work on his role-playing games, and I do know that King Arthur Pendragon is what he considered to be his crowning achievement. I'll tell you what, RuneQuest sure can't be far behind because this is a wonderful work. There is plenty to inspire you, even if you're not going to run this system. There is loads and loads that you can swipe to utilize in your own fantasy role-playing games, especially if you are looking for a bit more realism in your role-playing games. Now, that said, there's plenty of monsters, there's plenty of gods, you've got the rune magic, all of that. It is not historical role-playing by any stretch of the imagination. All in all, I give RuneQuest, role-playing in Glorantha, a 10 out of 10. That's right, it is that good. It is fantastic. I love this tome. And if you have any interest in RuneQuest, run out, pick this up as soon as you can. It is that good. All right, so that's it for this time out. I do want to point out, don't forget, join me live Mondays through Fridays at 7 p.m. Central Time right here on YouTube for The Daily Dope as I bring you all the latest tabletop gaming news that's fit to discuss. All right, once again, I'm Jeff McAleer. When you're not watching videos on the Gaming Gang channel, please be sure to visit thegaminggang.com for all the latest in gaming news, reviews, comics, movies, TV. By now you know the drill. Get your geek on at thegaminggang.com. And until next time, happy trails. Oh, hey, hi, I didn't realize that you were still here. You must be sitting waiting for YouTube and its infinite wisdom to actually autoplay you your next video. Well, if that happens to be the case, I only have 20 seconds for me to be able to provide all this info to you, so get ready. <sighs> If you'd like to subscribe to The Gaming Gang, click right here. Or if you'd like to check out the latest episode of The Daily Dope, click right here. Or if you'd like to check out a randomly selected video, click right here. Once again, I'm Jeff McLear, and thanks for watching.